Barnabas, the man that was mistaken for Zeus. When we think of the apostolic whirlwind that was Paul, we are amazed at the depth of his insight, the miracles that God worked through him, and the multitudes of people that he reached with the gospel of Jesus. However, how often do we remember those that guided, encouraged, and strengthened him from the very beginning, or those that were his loyal friends during his mission trips? One significant person in Paul's life that must not be ignored is Barnabas. We first meet Barnabas in the scriptures at a time when he shows his benevolent streak and his willingness to share his blessings with other believers. Acts chapter 4 verse 36 Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. However, he met Paul, who was previously called Saul after his conversion in Damascus. From this point on, they formed a strong and supernatural bond that survived many challenges over the years. Acts chapter 9, verse 20 through 28. At once, he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who call on this name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. After many days had gone by, there was a conspiracy among the Jews to kill him, but Saul learned of their plan. Day and night, they kept close watch on the city gates in order to kill him. But his followers took him by night and lowered him in a basket through an opening in the wall. When he came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he really was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord and that the Lord had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. So Saul stayed with them and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. When others either disbelieved Paul's conversion or wanted to kill him in revenge for his earlier persecution of the church, Barnabas was a strong rock for Paul and a great friend that encouraged him during this trying time. Galatians chapter 2, verse 9. James, Cephas, and John, those esteemed as pillars, gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship when they recognized the grace given to me. They agreed that we should go to the Gentiles, and they to the circumcised. Eventually, Barnabas' support was strong enough that the elders of the church now trusted Paul to go on missionary trips with Barnabas as his partner. Acts chapter 11, verse 21 through 28. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. News of this reached the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw what the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. During this time, some prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them, named Agabus, stood up and through the Spirit predicted that a severe famine would spread over the entire Roman world. This happened during the reign of Claudius. The disciples, as each one was able, decided to provide help for the brothers and sisters living in Judea. This they did, sending their gift to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. The power of the right friendships helped Paul tremendously because studying the word and praying with people like Barnabas helped him become such an effective disciple despite his terrible past. Acts chapter 13. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. The two of them, sent on their way by the Holy Spirit, went down to Seleucia and sailed from there to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. John was with them as their helper. They traveled through the whole island until they came to Paphos. There they met a Jewish sorcerer and false prophet named Bar-Jesus, who was an attendant of the proconsul Sergius Paulus. The proconsul, an intelligent man, sent for Barnabas and Saul because he wanted to hear the word of God. But Elimus, the sorcerer, for that is what his name means, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul from the faith. Then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at Elimus and said, You are a child of the devil and an enemy of everything that is right. 
You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. Will you never stop perverting the right ways of the Lord? Now the hand of the Lord is against you. You are going to be blind for a time, not even able to see the light of the sun. Immediately, mist and darkness came over him, and he groped about, seeking someone to lead him by the hand. When the proconsul saw what had happened, he believed, for he was amazed at the teaching about the Lord. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy. They began to contradict what Paul was saying and heaped abuse on him. Then Paul and Barnabas answered them boldly, We had to speak the word of God to you first. Since you reject it and do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and honored the word of the Lord, and all who were appointed for eternal life believed. The word of the Lord spread through the whole region, but the Jewish leaders incited the God-fearing women of high standing and the leading men of the city. They stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their region, so they shook the dust off their feet as a warning to them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Together, Paul and Barnabas had so much adventure. From miracles of healing to silencing agents of darkness, their friendship was filled with encouraging moments of wonders and the joy of fellowship with other believers. All of this was precious because it balanced out those moments of strong persecution that must have tried to frustrate a lot of their mission work. Acts chapter 14 At Iconium, Paul and Barnabas went as usual into the Jewish synagogue. There, they spoke so effectively that a great number of Jews and Greeks believed, but the Jews who refused to believe stirred up the other Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brothers. So Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there, speaking boldly for the Lord, who confirmed the message of His grace by enabling them to perform signs and wonders. The people of the city were divided. Some sided with the Jews, others with the apostles. There was a plot afoot among both Gentiles and Jews, together with their leaders, to mistreat them and stone them. But they found out about it and fled to the Lycaonian cities of Lystra and Derbe and to the surrounding country where they continued to preach the gospel. In Lystra, there sat a man who was lame. He had been that way from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul as he was speaking. Paul looked directly at him, saw that he had faith to be healed, and called out, Stand up on your feet. At that, the man jumped up and began to walk. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in the Lycaonian language, The gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought bulls and wreaths to the city gates because he and the crowd wanted to offer sacrifices to them. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of this, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd, shouting, Friends, why are you doing this? We too are only human, like you. We are bringing you good news, telling you to turn from these worthless things to the living God, who made the heavens and the earth, and the sea, and everything in them. In the past, he let all nations go their own way, yet he has not left himself without testimony. He has shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven and crops in their seasons. He provides you with plenty of food and fills your hearts with joy. Even with these words, they had difficulty keeping the crowd from sacrificing to them. Then some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowd over. They stoned Paul and dragged him outside the city, thinking he was dead. But after the disciples had gathered around him, he got up and went back into the city. The next day, he and Barnabas left for Derby. The challenge with being vessels God uses to work wonders and bring deliverance to others is that people start to forget that you are human also. They both faced this dilemma, but thankfully, they were both spiritually mature enough to bring glory to God in times like this. Unfortunately, as others were praising Paul and Barnabas, others were so jealous of their fame that they wanted them dead. Thankfully, they were spared by God, so they continued their work and even went ahead to build structures in all the churches they had helped to plant. Acts chapter 14, verse 23 through 26. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and, with prayer and fasting, committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. After going through Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia, and when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Italia. From Italia, they sailed back to Antioch, where they had been committed to the grace of God for the work they had now completed. 
On arriving there, they gathered the church together and reported all that God had done through them and how he had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. And they stayed there a long time with the disciples. And at those moments when there was confusion about very important issues like circumcision and its correlation with new birth in these churches, you could count on these two partners to sort it out. Acts chapter 15 Certain people came down from Judea to Antioch and were teaching the believers, Unless you are circumcised, according to the custom taught by Moses, you cannot be saved. This brought Paul and Barnabas into sharp dispute and debate with them. So Paul and Barnabas were appointed, along with some other believers, to go up to Jerusalem to see the apostles and elders about this question. The church sent them on their way, and as they traveled through Phoenicia and Samaria, they told how the Gentiles had been converted. This news made all the believers very glad. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and elders to whom they reported everything God had done through them. Then some of the believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees stood up and said, The Gentiles must be circumcised and required to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and elders met to consider this question. After much discussion, Paul got up and addressed them. Brothers, you know that some time ago God made a choice among you that the Gentiles might hear from my lips the message of the gospel and believe. God, who knows the heart, showed that he accepted them by giving the Holy Spirit to them, just as he did to us. He did not discriminate between us and them, for he purified their hearts by faith. Now then, why do you try to test God by putting on the necks of Gentiles a yoke that neither we nor our ancestors have been able to bear? No, we believe it is through the grace of our Lord Jesus that we are saved, just as they are. The whole assembly became silent as they listened to Barnabas and Paul telling about the signs and wonders God had done among the Gentiles through them. Sadly, there comes a time when even the best of friends may have to part ways because they grow apart or have differences that aren't easy to settle. After returning from their initial journey, Paul and Barnabas immediately began making preparations for their subsequent trip. Paul's refusal to take Barnabas' cousin led to a growing rift between the two of them, which eventually led to the two breaking off their relationship altogether. Acts chapter 15, verse 36 through 41. Sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, Let us go back and visit the believers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Barnabas wanted to take John, also called Mark, with them, but Paul did not think it wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in the work. They had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas and left, commended by the believers to the grace of the Lord. He went to Syria and Cilicia, strengthened by the churches. Barnabas, true to his moniker, took John Mark and disciplined him. That ministry was so effective that Paul specifically requested John Mark to come to him years later, as Mark had matured to be useful to Paul in his ministry. To Timothy, chapter 4, verse 11. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is very helpful to me for the ministry. Like Barnabas, as Christians, we are called to be encouragers, particularly of those who are weak in the faith or struggling. Acts chapter 11 verse 23 portrays Barnabas as a man who rejoiced to see others displaying God's grace in their lives, exhorting and encouraging them to remain faithful. Similarly, we should seek out opportunities to praise those who bring glory and honor to God by living lives that reflect their faith. Furthermore, Barnabas exemplifies a generous spirit when it comes to giving sacrificially to the Lord's work. We can learn a valuable lesson from Paul and Barnabas' relationship. Here were two godly men, beloved by the churches, filled with the Holy Spirit, enduring persecution alongside one another, seeing people saved, and enjoying an effective ministry. They were, however, human and did not always agree on everything. They fought and split up. Even the strongest and most devoted among us are prone to interpersonal conflicts and errors. We are all sinful humans. Both men's ministries continued. In fact, the number of missionary teams more than doubled. Even our disagreements can be used to further God's work. Paul and Barnabas maintained their faith in God. Even though it meant parting ways, they moved forward in peace. Paul and Barnabas disagreed on matters of personal opinion and practical procedure. In terms of doctrine, they both saw the importance of sharing the gospel with the rest of the world. They were all in agreement on what was truly important. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for teaching me about Barnabas, who was Paul's source of encouragement. 
I ask in the name of Jesus for wisdom to also be a true and solid friend to those you have brought into my life. Let me never quench the fire that you have started in them, but rather let me be a part of stirring them to be all you have ordained. Amen and Amen.